Do you want to learn the ropes on how to make a guitar for the first time? Stick with me and by the end of this video, you'll have a sick guitar to play your favorite tunes. Let's go. Hey there CNC here, Scott here again for CNC Labs. I'm gonna show you how to do it with tool paths and cuts you're already familiar with, profile and pockets. This is the real beginner guitar tutorial. We're back and we're ready to rock. Time to shred. Let's be upfront, we learned a lot creating the first epic guitar tutorial series. So what makes this guitar tutorial different than the last guitar tutorial? Well, we're going to simplify the process big time. We're gonna focus on cutting out just the body, we're gonna use a pre-made neck, there will be no 3D models in this project, profile and pocket cuts only. We'll still have to take and transfer measurements uh, to create accurate vectors and tool paths, but we've geared this towards the customer who wants to curve their first guitar body, not their first guitar from top to bottom. Small difference, but a big difference. This video is totally geared towards a flat style body like a Tele. No belly, no arm cutouts like a Les Paul or a Strat, just a flat uh, body profile cutout. It's about as simple as it gets. Having said that, uh, if you know me, I am like to, you know, do my own thing. So I'm going to be making a flat profile Gibson SG style guitar. I've already made one telly and I really don't want to make another one. So I'm going to put my own weird simple spin on this iconic design. And if you stick around, you'll see how I get this SG looking somewhat close to the original with a single extra toolpath. Before we dive into the actual tutorialage of this, I have, um, again, this is now the second guitar I've worked through. So I came up with a couple of tips. Some are repetitive, some are new, but let's run through my list of tips. One, use rigid foam for test carves. Last time I used wood and it worked great, but it's a lot more work. It's probably more expensive. And the rigid foam that you can pick up from the big box stores is cheap, easy to cut. You can run your bits and it still gives you a really nice final result to move forward from. A word of caution on rigid foam. If you can't find it in the same thickness as your actual material that you're going to carve with, you might have to make some tweaks in your file during testing. Ask me how I know. Tip number two, I said it last time, have your parts on hand before you start building this. You're gonna to need to measure them to adjust your design and your vectors. So to me, it just makes sense to have them on hand. I will include the links to the parts that I've used in the description. And perhaps while you're there checking out the link, you can, you know, give us a like and a subscribe to make sure you're keeping up to date with all the amazing content that CNC is putting out there for you. Ding. Tip number three. This one's a little bit tricky, but document everything you can so that you remember what you're doing. I have a couple of notebooks that have scribbles all over them. Some of my files have notes in them. If you document something, it will typically help you remember what you did and what you changed so that if you need to go back, you can. Tip number four, being able to recall and replicate measurements is priceless. This kind of goes in with the documenting things. For example, I used tape on the back of the neck heel to measure up 70 millimeters from the base, which gave me a specific location to measure the width of the neck heel along that line. So that when I was drawing my vectors, I had a reference measurement, not just some arbitrary number height wise. Replicating measurements, super key. That's it for tips. Decide what shape you want your guitar. You can create your own vector shape or download or trace something that already exists. Electric Herald has a ton of free, high quality existing guitar styles to choose from if you're looking. Keeping in mind that what you get online will most likely need some tweaking in order for it to become a reality. We're still trying to put together a precision instrument, so accuracy counts. Take your time, think, and measure twice or three or four, however many times you need to, just get it right. Get your vectors cleaned up. If you downloaded a drawing, it might be easier to clean it up in an external software like Illustrator or Inkscape. If you drew your own, you've got no one to blame but yourself. Go in and delete any unnecessary info. If you're not familiar with an external vector program, you certainly can use vCarve to do this step. I just prefer not to, and here is why. I use vCarve to create all the pockets and the final measurements, etc., because that's where I'm going to be carving from, not the external software. So I like creating my final vectors in the software I'm carving from as much as I can. Using a bounding box to center everything on your document makes life way easier. And having a center line centered on your document is a huge reference point when taking measurements later on. So take your time and get it right. I'm gonna set my document up to be two-sided even though there are no 3D models. It still works and you get to see the front and the back line up properly. Pay attention to your Z0 and your flip orientation in your setup so there's no surprises. 
I'd recommend getting used to sheets or layers within your CAD CAM software. They come in super handy when you're organizing your vectors once you've imported them. Import your vectors into vCarve, place the front vectors on the front side and the back on the back. It's pretty simple. The plans you have will likely need some amount of modification to accommodate the measurements of your actual on-hand parts. You're going to have to measure the parts you have on hand and then transfer their size, shape, and location, and then their depths once you create the tool paths to V-Carve. That's what I did for the neck pocket, pickup pockets, and all of the holes required. I know all these red boxes look confusing, but they're actually just size placeholders from parts I've measured. I use them as reminders and I use them to align so it's as accurate as it can be. Setting the locations of these things can be a bit more tricky unless you have an existing guitar to measure from, which would be a great resource if you can get your hands on one. Otherwise, it's going to be finding accurate resources online and doing some math to get their locations right. One of the most important measurements is where the bridge is going to sit on the body in relation to the neck. An SG is a 24 and 5 8 inch scale guitar. I'm going to call this A. If you divide A by 2, it gives you the halfway point between the nut and the bridge, or you can just use the 12th fret on the neck. The way I figured out where my bridge is going to sit was by measuring from the base of the neck heel to the 12th fret. I'll call that B. I measured the bridge thickness and divided it by 2 to find the center of the bridge. I'll call that measurement C. So the formula reads like this. A divided by 2 minus B plus C equals X. And X is where your bridge should sit. This all sounds complicated, but it's not that bad and hopefully this infographic helped clear up the mud. To get the left and right locations of all of these things, I measured the bridge width from the center line on the body, and I've included some notes in my file to help you figure out the locations for your build. The volume, tone, switch, and jack holes were, in my opinion, less important if their location wasn't spot on. The files I had were pretty decently accurate, and after my first test carve, I adjusted them to my taste. They needed you know, a little fudging here and there. The control cavity plate vector was created the old school way. I'm going to date myself here. <laughs> I traced around the plate that came with the kit uh, on a piece of paper, scanned it, imported the image into vCarve, and then traced it to create the vector for the plate. I offset the same trace line to create the control cavity vector. The neck, pickups, bridge, tailpiece, backplate, and control cavity were pocket tool paths. I measured the depth of those parts, and when I created their tool paths, assigned those depths. It was fairly straightforward. Volume and control holes required were profiles and had to go just past the depth of the control cavity. A big reason for doing another guitar project was to show off these fancy new roughing bits we're selling. They were made specifically long enough to go through thick projects like guitar bodies. The roughing bit chews through wood like a beaver and makes really short work of the tool paths. However, because of the serrated edges, it's not meant to be a finishing bit. So in V-Carve, I set a tiny offset allowance to cut the profile just a little bit bigger than the body vector is. Then I go in with a finishing bit or a tool path with no allowance offset set to clean up the lines left by the roughing bit. Add some tabs to the roughing and finishing profile passes and voila, you have your tool pass. Remember when I said I had a little hack that would help give this SG some of its original flair back? <laughs> this is what I came up with. If you use a slightly modified version of the profile toolpath that cuts out the body, plug in a 90 degree V bit, you can put a half decent bevel all the way around the front and back of this thing. Oh yeah, it's a total hack, but in my opinion, after a little node tweaking, it's absolutely worth adding. Is it as sexy as the actual bevels on an SG? No. But I thought it would pay better homage, is it homage or homage? Hom homage. Better homage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking the Brazilian guy how to say a French word. Homage. It's not homage. It's not homage. It's homage. 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 But I thought it would pay better homage than just hand routing around over around the edges. The last set of vectors to create are the index holes for flipping. The first guitar build, as well as the Cottage Country CNC paddle videos, go into a ton of detail about flipping. So if you're not sure about it, check those videos out. Now save your tool paths into groups if you're okay with that. There will be a few that need to be saved individually. The backside index holes need to be the first run on the backside as they're going to go into the wasteboard, and the profile cuts use different bits so they'll be separated as well. So that's it for the first video. I don't think I would ever say carving a guitar is easy, but I think we've done a pretty good job of making the process as simple as possible. In video two we are going to show you how we carve this beautiful body and assemble this beast into a fully functioning guitar.
If you are a first time guitar builder, hopefully this video helped you gain the confidence needed to tackle such a cool project. There really is nothing like building a guitar yourself and then hearing it play when it's done. As always, we are thrilled that you chose to check out our video. We've got lots of amazing content coming out regularly, so please subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of it. Thanks again for hanging out and we'll see you around the CNC. Did it sound like I say should sh should sit?